So as many of you know, there have been recent tragic episodes of natural disasters. On the shores of Indonesia, for example, there was a death toll of at least a thousand people and over 300,000 missing because of an earthquake 7.5 in its magnitude causing a tsunami, destroying the areas of Palu. Other disasters have been mentioned of mudslides in Japan and a volcanic eruption in Hawaii and obviously a lot more. Now as tragic as these things are sounding, it just shows how much this world is falling apart. People from all classes losing their houses, losing their land, losing everything that contains their life history and even things that are set up for the future, all gone without insurance. And that leads to a recent tragedy that has been happening since around the time of August up to this very present moment. And what I am referring to is the fires of California. Now it's been told that over 230,000 acres of land have been destroyed and over 15,000 structures including homes were also destroyed. And it's been shown that quite a few celebrities which California holds have posted their feelings about the fire on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube and expressed how they were affected as some of them also lost their homes. Now friends, I, I sincerely ask that you pray for those people who have lost their homes, lost their families because some people have actually died in the fire as well. But not just the tragedy that's happening in California but please also pray for those who have suffered in one way shape or form throughout the course of this year regarding natural disasters. Because I'm sure you can imagine as well as myself how you know things like this can be very heartbreaking to the point where you feel as if there's no more use of life because everything is destroyed around you. I don't know how that fully is but I do understand that people have gone through it. Therefore let us pray for these people. But now as I'm looking at the information regarding California, um, recent news came to my attention of a pastor who said something very very controversial. Notice clearly what he says and also try and see why he may have said this as well as the, the, the overall effects that it may have on the people who hear it who don't believe in God or even people who do. Notice what he says. If you look at the history of California, they've been at the forefront of this. Back in 1850, you know, a common law statute was installed in the territory of California providing for the legalization of uh, sodomy and setting the penalty at five years to life in prison. Uh, but the first gay pride march occurred in San Francisco in 1970 and then San Francisco legitimized homosexuality in 1972. In 1982, Laguna Beach, California elected the first openly homosexual mayor in United States history. In 1999, California adopted a domestic partnership law. I believe it was one of the first in the nation to do that. In 2005, California state legislators became the first in the nation to pass the same-sex marriage law. It was vetoed by Governor Schwarzenegger at the time. In 2008, the California Supreme Court then struck down Prop 22 in regard to marriage cases, and Prop 8 also was uh, struck down later on that year, I believe. In 2011, California became the first state to mandate homosexual indoctrination classes for K-8 students. And then in 2012, California became the first state to sign a ban on therapy that uh, was attempting to convert homosexuals into uh, non-homosexuals. And then in 2017, the California state uh, schools implemented the homosexual indoctrination program that was advised by the California Assembly in 2011. So that occurred just last year, you remember. Yep. And that was the kickoff for the biggest fires California has ever seen in its history last year. And those fires continue in 2018. So God is burning down California in 2017 and 2018 after about 25 years of leading the pack to legitimize the sin of homosexuality in that state. California in 2017 and 2018 after about 25 years of leading the pack to legitimize the sin of homosexuality in that state. In now, that state. Just from the outset, I can understand why he may have said what he said because of the fact that California has had a history of trying to push away things that God has put forward and also be bold about doing these things as well. I don't know if you remember, but there was a common saying which said in California, keep God out of California. Okay, but though this may be his opinion or maybe something that he has come to conclude, is God really responsible for what is happening in California? 
did he actually start the fires and is it a, a judgment of God to destroy California in this manner? Because on the other hand there are people who are strong believers in God who, who may have been affected by the fires as well. Well friends according to what I've studied in the word of God and according to the character of God this is not an act of God. This is not a judgment of God trying to destroy California. I believe Pastor Kevin Swanson, who was the one who was in the podcast, made a very big mistake in what he said. And the reason why this is important to express is because his words are actually gone viral, which means that a lot of non-believers as well as believers are affected. But in order to dispel some of what he said or to bring understanding to what's going on, I want to express what God does when it comes to destruction and judgment and what he doesn't. Let me give some examples. In Sodom and Gomorrah, when God destroyed that evil city, the question was asked of God, if there were even 10 righteous in the city, would he spare the city? And he obviously answered yes. And for that city to be destroyed implied clearly that there was no righteous left in the city, which means there was nothing else but evil. And not just evil, but people who have pleasure in evil, which means they have no pleasure in righteousness. And so because of that, the city was destroyed. Another example is in the book of Jonah, which is a similar situation with Sodom and Gomorrah. But instead of the constant evil, they repented and turned to God and they were spared. And so the point of the matter friends is that when God executes judgment, it is always done in a controlled manner aiming directly at sin. It wasn't like California where everything is just being destroyed in its path. So friends, you can know for sure that God is not responsible for what is going on in California. Now I do want to express that God does talk of a time when he will completely destroy sin with fire. And this is not the kind of fire which is commonly believed like people burning in hell for all eternity, which is error. But it is talking about a time where sin is going to be ultimately dealt with. But before that happens, the Bible expresses something known as her cup is not yet full. Meaning that we are living on probationary time for sin to do its work as well as righteousness to do its work, that being the gospel going throughout this whole world. But now this is the question, though we know that this act is not anything to do with God because he wasn't the one who started this, do any of these destructive um, activities going on, including California, do they have any significance for the times that we are living in? Yes, they do. Now there's one book which I truly believe is inspired next to the Bible, it is the book called The Great Controversy. The Bible surely highlights last day events, but the book Great Controversy is in a way setting a magnifying glass on what the Bible says about last day events, bringing it into more detail. Now I've used this quote in many of my other videos, but based upon the, the subject matter, I want to emphasize what this quote says so you can see exactly where we are. Notice what it says. Satan has control of all whom God does not especially guard. He will favor and prosper some in order to further his own designs, and he will bring trouble upon others and lead men to believe that it is God who is afflicting them. Friends, can you believe it? It's not God who's responsible for what's going on in um, California as well as Indonesia and other places that have these natural disasters. It's actually Satan. Just as it was in the book of Job when Satan went to God regarding Job because of his loyalty to God only then to inflict pain upon Job. And let's not forget what it says in Matthew chapter 24, just before the second coming of Jesus, it says that there will be many many disasters, there will be rumours of wars, there will be sickness, famines and many other things. But God did not say he will be the one doing it. So friends, the quote is absolutely true. Because in Satan's craft, he will believe that it is God who is responsible for doing these things rather than him. Now friends, as you study the Bible, as well as the book The Great Controversy, you'll, you, you, you'll find out that in the last days you'll see a union upon common ground. And that is throughout the whole world and throughout all religions as well. The Bible highlights this in Matthew chapter 24 with disasters and all these rumours of wars going around the world and Revelation chapter 13 with the whole world following this power, both expressing last day events in its context and chronology. But the question then is who is this power that this whole world is going to wander after or follow and how is the world going to react when all these natural disasters are going on? Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. But the main point I want you to understand is that it's no surprise that when there's natural disasters going on, the world seems to have this common ground, this common helping one another and being there for one another. Now I want you to notice what the Great Controversy says about this matter because we're going to see how things are going to turn out based upon what's happening. Notice this. In accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, 
in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon those whose obedience to God's commandments is a perpetual reproof to transgressors. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced, and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favour and temporal prosperity. Now some of you for the first time may be wondering what does this mean? in the sense of Sunday, in the sense of everything else that's happening in the world. Well, I can't go through all of it right now, but what I will say is that climate, the climate change and all these things that are happening in regards to natural disasters and so on, this is going to be the push to bring unity amongst the nations. And what's even worse is that the movement that aims to sort climate change, Satan is going to use in his craft to once again cast blame on God through his people who are characterized as keeping his commandments and violating the law of the land which is to strictly be enforced that being Sunday laws. Neil Young is another celebrity who's quite vocal now he took an opportunity to remind people that he's lost his home before so this is something that he's experienced he also said you know California is vulnerable not because of poor forest management as uh, so-called for the president would have us think and Donald he goes on to say we are vulnerable because of climate change and hopefully we can come together as a people to take climate change on. This is what the Bible refers to as those who have the mark of the beast. In essence, those who obey man rather than obeying God. That's what the whole theme of the Bible is about. Now the answer to the question that I was going to give was based upon who is this power that everybody's going to follow after, who's going to be the main leader in sorting out the prosperity and peace in this world. Well, this power is none other, if you study the Bible carefully, none other than the papal power. Now friends, for more information, if you want to know more about this subject, I've completed a series called From Daniel to the Sunday Law. Now this goes point by point highlighting what is to come in the last days and also show what's going on with this topic of climate change, natural disasters and expressing how close we are to the end of time. But what I also want to express is that this, th th these messages are not based upon bashing people or like bashing individuals like the Catholic people, even Francis himself. It is based upon the system which Bible prophecy foretells will be the leader in what is to come very soon. And so friends, to conclude in this video, we must understand these things in the matter of what's going on. God is not responsible for the fires that are going on in California, rather we know it is Satan. But we know where everything is leading to because we are living in the end times and Satan is simply the one trying to bring everybody on board to follow him. But we must be vigilant, understand the word of God so we know where things are going and we know what we ought to do. Please check out all the other links in the description box below where you can help this ministry to move forward with the gospel as well as um, also ministries that are actually practical in helping areas that have been destroyed and areas that are going through a lot of famine, starvation and so on. That information will be in the description box below and in showing you how you can also help as well. And so friends, if you've been blessed from this video, please share, please subscribe and please also support us. And may God bless you and each and every one of us as we come closer and closer to the end of time. And friends, the quicker we get the gospel out, the less of these disasters we will have because God will make a new heavens and a new earth where there will be no more death, no more sorrow and no more sin according to Revelation chapter 21. Alright friends, God bless you all and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye for now.